Welcome to Moody Blooms. In this episode, we are going to talk about the Sansevieria, also known as mother-in-law's tongue or snake plant. We're going to discuss lighting, watering, and propagation. If you've never grown a houseplant before or are looking for something that is virtually indestructible, and look no further. The Sansevieria is perfect for the forgetful gardener and a great starter plant. This is probably the toughest and most tolerable houseplant you can find as it's able to survive many unsuitable growing conditions. It is also a good looker too, with attractively patterned leaves that don't flop or spread. It's great for tight spaces or where you want something upright. According to NASA's clean air study, the snake plant is considered an air purifying plant as it removes toxins from the air. It releases nighttime oxygen, so it's ideal to have in your bedroom. This tall, robust plant grows up to three to four feet tall with a tight clump of many vertical inclined dark green leaves with a lighter gray green zigzag, horizontal bands, and broad longitudinal yellow stripes along the margins. Mother-in-law's tongue is commonly known as snake plant. While its full scientific name is Sansevieria trifasciata florentii. Now say that 10 times fast. It is a succulent from West Africa and a popular choice for indoor gardens and interior design. It is called mother-in-law's tongue for their long, sharp pointed leaves and because it lasts so long. These are long lived, easy to care for houseplants. It's also called snake plant as their pattern resembles the scales of a snake. Now for lighting. Now I like to place it in an area with plenty of bright light and mild temperatures to help the plant flourish. Although mother-in-law's tongue is tolerant of low light, so it's perfect for an office or in an area that has very uh, limited sunlight. Variegated forms need more light and can be more difficult to grow. The pattern in the leaves tends to be more bright when exposed to light, but bright direct light may be too intense for the plant and may cause leaf drooping. A north-facing window is acceptable, but long periods of northern exposure can cause drooping leaves. If you did place the plant in full sun without gradual transition, remove it to a shadier place and slowly transition it back into the sunnier area over a good period of time. I also like to turn the pot a quarter turn every week for even light exposure. Now for watering. I like to water the soil, taking care not to get water on the leaves, which can cause them to rot. I like to water along the sides of the plant. Try to keep water out of the center of the leaf clump. Water until the water drains from the bottom and empty drained water from the trays promptly. Or better yet, my favorite way to water is to soak it in a larger container. Allow it to sit in there for about 20 minutes or so. If the leaves are drooping, it means something isn't right. Usually it's from overwatering. Any problems growing Sansevieria are usually related to water. Allow the top two to three inches of soil to dry out between waterings during the growing season. Every two to three weeks is typically adequate. In winter months, only water when the leaves begin to look slightly wilted. Once a month is usually sufficient, depending on your humidity. If your snake plant is near a vent or a sunny window, you'll need to water more frequently. If the leaves turn yellow or get soft and mushy at their base, it's overwatered. If this happens, stop watering immediately and rub a small amount of vegetable oil on the leaves. The vegetable oil will force water out of the mushy spot and turn it green again. While the natural yellow outline on the edges of the variegated snake plant is normal, Yellowing across the entire leaves is a sign that the plant is either being overwatered or has been transitioned too quickly to an area with bright sunlight. To rescue the plant before it's fatal, reduce the watering immediately and let the soil dry out. Always allow the soil to dry out before watering in the future. I like to keep the leaves dust-free and glossy by wiping them with a damp cloth or wipe the leaves with a cotton ball dipped in milk. Plant spray isn't recommended, but I've heard conflicting opinions. I have read that leaf spray prevent CO2 and O2 exchanges and can suffocate the plant. Sansevierias like to be slightly root bound, so I'd wait to repot for a year or so. But keep an eye on it because if it's too root bound, that can also cause the leaves to droop. The snake plant is one of the few plants that can be propagated with cuttings taken from cross sections of their long spear shaped leaves. The Sansevieria will produce roots when placed in soil or water. Be sure to let the cuttings callus over for three to seven days first though. If not, they are more susceptible to rotting. Keep in mind that when the variegated cuttings send up new growth, the sprouts revert to solid green and the yellow margins are lost. I just had to rescue the snake plant from Lowe's that was on their clearance rack. I figured worst case scenario, I would at least be able to separate it into multiple plants 
or get some cuttings from the drooping leaves. I cut off all the drooping leaves and waited for the ends to callus over. I put half in soil and half in water. Now from my experience with propagating other succulents, I always find they root much faster in water. Well, the same thing happened with the snake plant cuttings. The cuttings in water have some beautiful roots. Now they take much longer to root than most other succulents, so just be patient and think of how many new babies you will eventually have. Here are the cuttings that I placed in soil. I have two that shriveled up and died, but all of the others have at least some growth. Now you'll notice the roots in this particular pot are tiny. They didn't get quite as much light as the others, I think. And also, if you notice, the leaves aren't quite as healthy. They were kind of curling when I cut them off. So, I mean, they're still getting roots, but just not quite as much growth. Now this pot was by far the best for the uh, soil. Have nice, healthy roots growing and it looks great. Now the other cutting didn't get quite as much roots on there, but it still does have some nice, healthy roots and definitely much better than the previous pot. Here's my last tip of the day. This is a moisture meter and they're very inexpensive. I'll put the link for you down below. They are awesome. They are a foolproof way to water. So here is another comparison of the original plant on the left that was prior to me taking the cuttings. The picture on the right, of course, is the snake plant after the cuttings were taken. And I'll probably end up cutting that lower left leaf. It's kind of still tilting to the side a little bit. Once those bend completely, they'll never stand back up again. So I will go ahead and just cut it back right at the base. Here's another update of our six week cuttings and the beautiful healthy roots. The water propagation worked extremely well. Every one of them had a good substantial amount of roots. The ones on the right are also doing really well, but we didn't have quite as many roots on the cuttings that we planted in the soil. Thanks so much for watching today. If you've enjoyed the content, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of our next video. Also, if you have any questions, please comment below and I'd be glad to get back to you. Also, I'd love to hear what's working for you, what's not working for you, and if you have any suggestions. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time on Moody Blooms.